Bruch Maboim. Again, welcome to our home. Thank you for attending. So, this week on my thoughts, I would like to begin my lecture with an examination of both the signs that Moshe displayed before the people and before Pharaoh in Egypt. And then afterwards, again, this will be more than one lecture, I'd like to examine all the plagues that God Almighty brought upon the Egyptians in Egypt. The Shemi Shmuel stated that God Almighty provided Moshe with three signs that he would perform to convince the children of Israel that he was the true Redeemer. The first sign was a staff that Moshe turned into a snake. The second sign occurred when Moshe placed his hand inside his shirt. When he removed his hand, it became leprous. Then when he replaced his hand into a shirt, when he removed it again, it returned to its healthy state. The third sign occurred when God told Moshe to take some water from the Nile and pour it onto the dry land where it would turn into blood. Now, the question that comes to mind is, why didn't the children of Israel simply believe that Moshe was the Redeemer without any proof? Now, their disbelief was prompted by the fact that they did not feel ready for redemption. They knew that the exile had a specific purpose, one which they believed that they had not yet realized. The underlying function of the Egyptian exile was to rectify three sins that were transgressed by three previous generations. First, the generation of Enosh. They had the ability to perfect the world by using their power for good. Instead, they chose to use them to introduce idolatry into the world. Then came the generation of the flood. Uh, they were sexually immoral. They had a particular proclivity for the sin. In fact, they could have overcome their desires and improved the world, but they chose not to, and they failed. Finally, the generation that built the Tower of Babel. They are characterized, if not acts as actual murderers, at least as people had no regard for the sanctity of human life. They wept more for the loss of a brick than they mourned for the loss of a person. So who were the Jews that were enslaved in Egypt? They were basically Gilgulim, reincarnations of these four generations that angered God Almighty with their behavior. The first, as I mentioned, was the generation of Enosh, who introduced idol worship into the world. The second was the generation of the flood, who promoted sexual improprieties into the world. The third was the generation of dispersion, the builders of the Tower of Babel, whose approach to human life was tantamount to murder. And the fourth was the generation of Sodom. These four generations were reincarnated as the Jews who were enslaved in Egypt. The Egyptian slavery was meant as a form of elevation for them, a sort of opportunity for them to do tshuva, to repent. So these three special generations not only failed to cleanse the world from the three cardinal sins of idolatry, sexual immorality, and murder. Instead, they actually introduced and cultivated them. The children of Israel, the bearers of morality, needed to undergo a series of oppressive decrees to wipe these sins out of their collective consciousness. Since a residue of these, sin, these three sins still remained in their collective DNA, which is one of the reasons that four-fifths of the Jews died during the days of darkness before the Jews left Egypt. This is another reason why Moshe thought that they wouldn't believe him. They knew that it would take 400 years to achieve this end. However, the children of Israel were sinking into the spiritual perversions of Egypt. They had already reached the 49th level of impurity. If they had been allowed to reach the 50th level, the abyss, they would never have been redeemed. So in the merit of receiving the Torah at Mount Sinai in the near future, that cleansing would be allowed to begin now. The staff turning into a snake was an allusion to the snake in the Garden of Eden. He was the first to introduce a rebellion against God Almighty, which in effect was an introduction of idolatry into the world. The second sign of leprosy was an allusion to the punishment promised to women who were immoral. And blood was an allusion to the sin of murder. You know, by bringing these three sins together, Moshe demonstrated to the children of Israel that he understood their concerns. 
The hand that became leprous returned back to its original healthy state, as did the staff that had turned into a snake. However, the water that was turned into blood, well, that remained blood. But why? This was to signify that once blood has been shed, it cannot be rectified. This was meant as a warning to Pharaoh and the Egyptian people that the blood that they had shed in the past and the blood that would be shed in the future downfall of Egypt could not be undone. Before Moshe performed these three signs for the people, he complained to God that the people would not believe him, that he had been sent by God to redeem them. Well, God Almighty answers Moshe. He says, Ma What is that in your hand? Moshe answers God, Mata, a staff. God then commands him to throw the staff to the ground. When Moshe does, his staff turns into a snake. Well, Moshe is afraid of the snake. Then he runs from it. But then in verse number four, God tells him to pick up the snake by its tail. Moshe follows God's instruction and he picks the snake up by its tail. So we have to wonder, why did God turn his staff into a snake? And then, why did God tell Moshe to pick the snake up by its tail rather than by its head? So Rashi stated on this verse that Moshe had spoken negatively about the children of Israel when he replied that they will not believe me. Then he had used the art of the snake. The Dukuti Basu Lukute stated that God was teaching Moshe that as a leader, he should be willing to sacrifice himself for the benefit of his people. It is very dangerous to grab the tail of a snake, but a good leader must be oblivious to danger when he assumes control of his nation. We read that Moshe exhibited this trait when the children of Israel sinned with the golden calf, and Moshe offered himself up again in lieu of them. God was also rebuking Moshe for casting aspersions on the character of the children of Israel. A leader must always see his people in the best light possible. We as individuals are commanded, that you shall love your fellow man as yourself. How much more so should a leader demonstrate that love for those that he leads? You know, the Kutzka Rebbe, the Menachem Mendel of Kutsk, used to say that insanity was put into this world so that one Jew can look at another and as crazy as it sounds, always find goodness in him. God tells Moshe, Put your hand into your shirt. Moshe does so, and when he removes his hand, his hand was leprous, it was white as snow. Then God told him, to return his hand into his shirt. And when he removed his hand, it was normal once again. So Rashi explains that God was hinting to Moshe, Rabbeinu, once and again, that speaking Lushan Hara, evil speech about his people, was not acceptable. Therefore, he was punished with leprosy, just as Miriam, when she mis misspoke about Moshe, her brother. From this story, we learn the importance of work. You know, Abbas Rav Nassim learned from this verse that work purifies not only the body, but also the soul of a person. As it states in the Torah in the portion of Kisisa, Sheshish Yom Tavu, six days of the week you shall work. This is, an, this is, that is in addition to the mitzvah of Shabbat. Laziness promotes decay. If a hand is hidden in one's shirt, which is an allusion to refraining from work, then they are in essence suffering from leprosy, a sense of destruction and ruin. But when a hand is outstretched in the performance of work, then their skin is returned back to its normal condition. God then told Moshe that if the people do not believe the first two signs, then he should then take Mimei Hayaor from the water of the Nile and Havaludam, and it will turn into blood. This was a sign for the people that when God punishes a nation, he first punishes their divinity, their God. Since the Egyptians worshipped the Nile as a God, the first plague brought upon them affected the waters of the Nile. Moshe and Aaron were then instructed by God Almighty to go to Pharaoh. Pharaoh tells them to demonstrate the power of God with some sort of sign. Responding to his request, 
Aaron takes his staff and following God Almighty's command, he throws his staff in front of Paro. Once the staff rested at Pharaoh's feet, then he told it to turn into a serpent. Well, Pharaoh wasn't very impressed. He called his wise men and sorcerers, and they too turned their staffs into snakes. Though they were able to produce snakes, uh, there was a great difference between them and Aaron. Aaron's staff was actually, had actually turned into a snake, whereas the snakes that Pharaoh's wise men and magician produced were only illusions. Then Aaron turned his snake back into a staff, and in verse number 712, it states, by Yivla, that his staff swallowed up all their staffs. Why does the Torah use the Hebrew word by Yivla? Well, this connects to the portion of Miketz, which introduced the dreams of Pharaoh. In Pharaoh's dream, it says, by Yivlana Hashibolin, the thin ears of grain swallowed up the fat, full ears. This was something that went against the laws of nature. And so to here. Pharaoh should have recognized the hand of God since this miracle went against the laws of nature. A staff does not swallow other staffs. The Tankuma states in Pharaoh's dream, the thin ears of grain, though they swallowed the fat ears, did not change in their appearance. And so too, the staff of Aaron, though it swallowed up all the other staffs of Pharaoh's wise men and sorcerers, it did not become any thicker than it had been originally. This fact proved that it was a miracle from God and not sorcery. This was a sign for Pharaoh. He was amazed and, and he said, if he were to say to his staff, swallow up Pharaoh and his throne, it would immediately swallow me up. Even so, he still refused to let the people go. This remains a symbol for all the miracles and wonders which would occur for the children of Israel throughout the ages. Now, you know, God could have instructed Moshe to perform miracles in many different ways, that being the case. Then why did he choose a snake? The Medjish Rabbit presents the variety of reasons. One reason was to inform Pharaoh that just as the snake was punished with ten curses, so too would he be struck with ten plagues. Also, just as the snake moves in a crooked path, so too Pharaoh was crooked in his ways. A snake has the ability to kill, so too Pharaoh has the ability to kill. And just as a snake kills with its mouth, so too does Pharaoh kill with his mouth. You know, another illusion was that just as the snake sinned with Chava, the first woman, by talking against God Almighty, so too Pharaoh said to in Shemos, who is God that I should listen to him? Our sages tell us that when someone slanders God Almighty or even questions his existence, then they are punished with snakes. We see this scenario played out in Torah, in the portion of Chukat, where it states that the children of Israel in the desert complained against God Almighty. And as a punishment for their complaints, God sent poisonous snakes against them and many people died. The sign of the snake should have alerted Pharaoh that he was following in the same path as the snake in the Garden of Eden, but he failed to heed the warning. Though the signs may have been the same, the purpose of the signs were meant to accomplish different objectives. For Moshe, the signs were to teach him leadership qualities. For the people, they were meant to prove that God Almighty was now ready to redeem them from their oppressive slavery. For Pharaoh and the Egyptian people, it was an opportunity to bring them to a state of tshuva, repentance, and a recognition that there is a God in the world and that they should obey him. We see that God performed three signs for Moshe at the burning bush. Moshe then performed these same three signs for the children of Israel in Egypt. But for Pharaoh, he performed only one sign, the snake. It was only when Pharaoh refused to release the children of Israel from their oppressive servitude that God had Moshe bring the plagues on Egypt. The plagues began with turning all the water into blood. God, pardon me, God willing in my next, my thought, we will take a closer look at the plagues that God brought on Pharaoh and the Egyptian nation. Let us offer our prayers to God Almighty, our Father in heaven, that he should quickly bring home all the hostages, cure the injured, comfort the mourners, 
In return, our brave IDF soldiers, victorious with the coming of Mashiach Sukeno. Now, again, we thank you for attending. We bless you with health and safety and happiness. And again, God should bless Israel and that, that again, all this misery, all the death and destruction should end and Mashiach should come. Again, let me ask you again, once again, to please uh, subscribe to, the, to my uh, uh, site and also to push like and share. Again, God bless. Be well. Thank you for listening. Again, if you want to stay tuned, there will be a original song that I will be playing right after this uh, video. Again, thank you very much. God bless. Shabbat Shalom.